Right, here we are in 1983, and uh, I was only a nipper then. Yeah, and I was uh, not quite a teenager uh, back in 1983, and we're starting with the Aquarius uh, computer system from Mattel Electronics, the guys that also released uh, the Intellivision, and I don't really know, I can't remember this very well, don't really know much about this one, James. I've never seen one of these, but it does feature a Z80 microprocessor, uh, rubber keys, a whopping 4K of RAM, and it had various different peripherals that connected to it. It completely relied on a TV for the audio and the visio, but you can see in the picture here, there's a uh, cassette deck uh, for recording, uh, backing up data, so it would use that for a storage. There's also some controllers there, and uh, a printer, so it's good to see, even then you could get a printer back in 1983, and it's a thermal printer there. Yeah, but if you uh, take a look at the price, James, you'll see it's worth the printer. It actually costs a hell of a lot more than the actual computer. The Aquarius home computer system comes with all this and an amazing feature no one else has. A 13-inch color TV for just $99. So, according to that US TV commercial, if you bought the whole kit, they would even send you a color TV for just $99. Probably not a bad price back then. And then if you take a look at this page... There's um, a lot of things you could add on to this to make it into a full computer system, James. Yeah, on this Argos page, we've got number 22 up in the top left-hand corner, and this is a memory expansion pack that takes the memory all the way up to 16K. That was 49.99 back in the day, so that's quite a bit of expensive memory, if you ask me. But anyway, uh, 16K if you needed it for your programming. There's also some screenshots at the top there of different games that you can get. Uh, the game's there either twenty four ninety nine or uh, nineteen ninety nine. So not a great selection, but there's a few in case you wanted to buy some. And last but not least, there's of course the printer, which it says in the advert here will print hard copies of anything you create on the TV. And it prints at a whopping 80 characters a second. So just imagine comparing that now to a laser printer. It's mad. But yeah, at least you could get a printer then, even though it was, as we said earlier, a lot more expensive than the computer. OK, let's move on from the Aquarius and see what the next page brings. Oh my God, it's a Commodore! Yes, I was a big Commodore fan back in the day and uh, yeah, Commodore VIC-20. Was, uh, one of my friends had one of these and I really wanted one and I was going to get one for Christmas but then the Commodore 16 came out uh, which sort of took over from the VIC-20 and I ended up with one of those instead. But uh, yeah, this is the uh, first Commodore computer then that we've seen so far in the uh, Argos catalogue and it came out in 1981 so I think as this is 1983 I think Argos were a little bit late to the party with getting the uh, Commodore in there but uh, yeah it's uh, good to see it in there now. Three years after the Commodore PET was released here comes the VIC-20 and it was the first ever home computer to sell over a million units. So for those of you who want to know bit about the specs of the VIC-20. Um, it actually came with five kilobytes of RAM, but unfortunately um, one and a half kilobytes of these were used up by the system display and running the operating system. Um, so you didn't have much to play with. Uh, the VIC-20 also had a single DE9 game controller port and it was compatible with digital joysticks and paddles that the Atari 2600 used. So that's pretty handy, you could use your Atari uh, peripherals on this. When you pinged your first Pong, you were being prepared for something. When you ate your first power pill, you were being prepared for something far greater. Because those game machines were crude versions of computers. And what you were being prepared for was a real version of a computer, the Commodore VIC-20. Games like you've never seen before. But more important, true computing, the Commodore VIC-20. A real computer for the price of a toy. There you go, a home computer for the price of a toy. That's some Commodore marketing at its best. It was also quite interesting there how they were actually trying to sell this as an educational computer rather than just a games machine. So if you wanted to buy a Commodore VIC-20 from Argos back in 1983, it would cost you £139, which in today's money is a whopping £330. But that not only got you the computer, but also the data cassette that you needed to load your games. 
Uh, other things that you could buy it from Argos to add to the computer was the Commodore joystick and the 16K memory expansion pack which plugged directly into the VIC-20 to give you 16K extra RAM allowing you to play uh, bigger and better computer games and more complex programs. We both love Commodore but let's see what else was in the catalogue back in 1983. Wow, what, what? I haven't got a clue what this is James, do you know what this is? No, I don't, but I wish someone would explain it to me. Looking for a powerful home computer? This is the one. Texas Instruments Home Computer. With 16K memory, it can take you a long way. Want a computer with a lot of software? Oh, yeah, this is the one. The TI Home Computer gives you more of these software cartridges than any computer in the world. The whole world. So, with all the power you have here to run all the power here, this is the one. The home computer from Texas Instruments. This is the one. Wow, there's a blast from the past. Bill Cosby trying to flog you a TI-99. Well, I don't know what there is to say about this other than I've never seen one or used one and I'm a Commodore man like you are. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, Mr Cosby there was getting slightly overexcited about this. Maybe it was something to do with getting paid to get excited about it, I don't know. Um, might be doing him a disservice there. It is the one though, apparently, so forget everything else, this is what you need. Okay, so a little bit of information obviously taken straight from this catalog here. So it came with 16K of memory, a 48 key QWERTY keyboard, and some uh, joysticks. I don't want that boxes on number 10, a speech synthesizer. So you can get, it makes possible the exciting addition of speech to the Texas TI-99 home computer. Requires a command module containing speech program. See item 11. So you've got to buy that as well by the looks of things. So uh, the price is adding up. Um, no wonder Commodore did much better. As I'm reading all this, I'm thinking it's 80 quid to make this thing speak. Yeah, but I guess they had to pay for that Bill Cosby advert somehow. Anyway, uh, I think it's time we moved on, so let's see what exciting things are on the next page. Wow, an Intellivision from Mattel. Now, Argos really were moving with the times because there's stacks more in the 1983 catalogue compared to last year's. Yes, and so far in this catalogue, it's mainly been sort of computers that you can play games on, but now we're actually moving into consoles by the looks of it with the Intellivision. Intellivision. The intelligent home video system. Intellivision turns your TV set into a family entertainment centre. Television. Intellivision. It's a lot more fun and a bigger challenge. You are there. No game plays the same way twice. More realistic. See how the players move. Listen to the sound effects. The roar of the crowd. You are there. there are Intellivision games for everyone in the family. Space games, sport, battle action, learning games and even games of chance. In Television. The finest home video game system in the world today. The only system designed to keep pace with tomorrow. Before you buy any other video game system, be sure. Play in television first. And you are there. In television. So intelligent, no game plays the same way twice. Play in television at selected outlets of these stores. In television. Well, this was, of course, the biggest rival to Atari back in the day and uh, Argos was selling it for 99.95 came with a uh, mains adapter two hand controllers and what looks like an amazing realistic unbelievably realistic soccer game I've never played it but I know you have yeah um, I had one of these it was a few years on from this when I was in hospital in 1990 my uncle lent me one to uh, play on when I was in hospital so I had quite a long stay six months in hospital and uh, yeah, so I used to pass away the afternoons playing on this thing. There's some games that you can get there. What well, looks like Pitfall, and uh, there's a Frogger game that Parker won on the right. So number four looks like Pitfall. Number five is uh, is what looks like Frogger to me. Yeah, definitely is. Seventeen ninety nine a game, so not too bad. Well, moving over the page, we've got a video game console from the company here in Europe known as Philips. This is the G7000 computer game system. 
Now you guys over the pond in America will probably know this as the Magnavox Odyssey 2. Well this uh, system actually came out in 1978 so Argos a bit behind with this one but it actually sold over 2 million units worldwide so that's pretty impressive uh, certainly for a console back in the day. And uh, probably because of uh, it being a little bit older than some of the other systems it's probably why it's reflected in the price of just £69.95. Now I've actually got one of these at home, I haven't had it very long but I found it very cheap in the local free ads. One thing I find about it is the actual console is actually pretty big and the controllers that you get to, to with it, they're both hardwired. And I remember seeing the cartridges for these, they were a little bit funny, they had a sort of a big handle on the top of them. Uh, but anyway, uh, Argos was selling uh, several games uh, at various different prices in uh, the 1983 catalogue to go with the system. and. Uh, they had things like um, Munchkin and uh, Pickaxe Pete, apparently. But uh, the number 13 is a game that I remember seeing other people play back in the day, and that's uh, Freedom Fighters. I am a fixed video game. Are you skillful enough to navigate in the depths of hyperspace and outfight a constant stream of alien spacecraft? You will need to be deadly accurate and have lightning reactions. Freedom Fighters. One of a cluster of new video games. From Philips. Okay, so hold on to your joysticks. It's time to turn the page and see what exciting item is on the next page. And yay, it's the Atari 2600, and they've given it a double page spread. So I don't think we need to tell you guys much about this legendary console. There's a picture there of the Woody 6 switcher and a couple of the classic Atari joysticks in uh, all its glory. Well, I've never seen those two sort of accessories on the left, but what are they? Well, uh, item number one is the Magic Video Storage Center for organizing and protecting your console and games. And item number two is also video game storage cases. And uh, you could put several of your games into these cases and make them look like books. Now why on earth would you want to store video games in fake books? Well that's just something that people used to do back in the 80s, James. Uh, they used to put video cassettes as well into them. And uh, I think it's just to make yourself look a little bit more intelligent back in the 80s. One thing that's quite impressive here, there is the, the selection of games that Argos were actually selling for the Atari 2600. Yes, I certainly would have chosen this purely from the selection of games. Yeah, and I've still got my Atari 2600 today and it's set up in my games room ready to go. And one of my go-to games for the system is Pitfall, which I see they've got here on this page. Just last night, I was lost in the jungle with Pitfall Harry, surrounded by giant scorpions and man-eating crocodiles. Well, Harry and I just grabbed the van, swung through the trees, and over the tar pits and found the jungle treasure. It was really neat. If you haven't met Pitfall Harry, you're missing the year's most incredible video game adventure. Pitfall for the Atari 2600 and in television. Since I met Pitfall Harry, no other man will do. Pitfall, designed by David Crane for Activision. Well, I'm not sure whether you spotted him, but there's a young Jack Black there and a, a young girl getting more excited over Pitfall Harry than even I do. But anyway, it's time to turn the page yet again. Right, next up in this catalogue, then we've got the ColecoVision from CBS. Yeah, so I've still got one of those up in my games room today. It's a, it's a pretty good console, but I don't play it all that often, to tell you the truth. I think I slightly still prefer the Atari 2600. Gives you a bit more of a nostalgic feel, if you ask me. If you own ColecoVision, you already own a powerful state-of-the-art computer that gives you the arcade experience with the newest arcade games like Donkey Kong Jr., Looping, Pepper 2, Time Pilot, Mr. Do, Space Fury, Frontline, arcade controls like Turbo, the Roller Controller, and new Super Action Sports. And soon you'll plug in Atom, the revolutionary ColecoVision family computer module with new super games, keyboard, and printer. ColecoVision, the only system you'll ever need. Well, looking at back at that old advert, it looks like they were trying to make this a games console and a computer with more add-ons than you could shake a controller at. Right, let's take a look at some of the goodies we've got on this page then. So the uh, actual console is quite expensive at £145. It's 
one of the more expensive consoles that we've seen so far. Uh, as we've seen with the advert, it's all about the add-ons, and it looks like there's some here. Yeah, they've got the expansion module 2 here, which was a steering wheel with a foot pedal. Uh, they don't seem to be selling the expansion 1, which was a, a add-on that you plugged into it and let you play Atari 2600 games on it. That's a brilliant idea. It is, so it was like backwards compatible, but with another console <laughs> altogether. <laughs> brilliant. The games Argos was selling uh, to go with the console were Venture, Mousetrap, Zaxxon and Smurf which uh, I think were all available on the Atari 2600 as well, so don't know why you need the expansion one, really. <laughs> well, not to worry, if you can't quite afford it, there's an Argos budget card, and it looks like they'll lend you 24 times your monthly repayment. So, uh, what's stopping you? So, moving over the page is another console that I've got in my games room, and it's one of my favourite consoles of all time, it's the Vectrex. And to tell us all about the Vectrex here is legendary racing driver Jackie Stewart. You really get the feel of Grand Prix racing with this Vectrex video game. All Vectrex cartridges take you to the limit because Vectrex is the high performance video game machine. It's portable with a built in screen and vector graphics. Sharper, faster, more responsive than ordinary TV graphics. I beat you, Dad. Vectrex is the high performance video game machine. Well, if you want one of these, I suggest you pick it up super quick because it was only on the market for a year. It's the first computer game system to come built in with its own monitor. And uh, judging by the name, you probably know it's uh, vector graphics, not raster graphics like the old consoles you've seen already in this uh, video. But yeah, vector graphics and they were super smart and super quick. Two peripherals were also available for the Vectrex back in the day, a light pen and a 3D imager, but the console came with its own game and the game was called Mindstorm. Yes, Mindstorm was the game that came built in and it had a bug on level 13. If you got to level 13 it crashed, so it's quite hard to get to level 13, I've never actually done it. But back in the day if you wrote to MB and said to them that you've got to level 13 and it's crashed, they would send you, send you a cartridge which was Mindstorm 2 which was actually the same game but without the bug. Needless to say, they didn't send out many of those cartridges, so that cartridge today is one of the system's rarest games. Well, there's so much choice back in 1983. Can there possibly be any more video game goodness? Ah, so now we're on to the electronic games. Now, we looked at the electronic games. There was a lot of those back in the 1982, so we covered them in the last episode. And uh, it's good to see though that Entex have added uh, Defender by the looks of it to their series of games. And it's also good to see the Game & Watch games from Nintendo making an appearance down in the bottom left hand corner there. There's Donkey Kong, a game that I've got in my collection. And also the yellow one game there is by CGL, it's uh, Frogger, that's another game that I still have in my collection today. Moving over to the right hand side of the page, it's good to see Grandstand still in the Argos catalogue, but this time with some new games. So right in the middle at the top, Firefox F7, and then a slightly smaller game below it called Crazy Monster. Yes, I remember the Firefox F7. Um, I've not actually played it, but I remember some friends having it. And it's good to see that they've added to their collection since 1982. Don't forget, you can still get your power adapter. Oh yeah. Well, over the page, and it looks like we're starting to run out of gaming goodness in this uh, 1983 copy of the Argos catalogue. But there's a, a Tomy 3D game at the top left hand corner. I remember those. I didn't actually have that version. I had a one with biplanes, which is very similar. There's some other honourable mentions: uh, Computer Battleships, Big Track. You must remember that. Pocket Simon, so a smaller version of the popular game. A strange game I've never heard heard of, but called Bent Out of Shape. And the game behind it is Test Match. Now, I remember playing that. It's like a cricket game that you set up on a table. And, of course, on the left of there, you've got Speak and Spell. Yeah, so I think that's about it for the 1983 copy of the Argos catalogue. And uh, why don't you join us soon when hopefully we'll be going through 1984? Yeah, if you do want to see another year of the Argos catalogue, please make sure you leave a comment. If you've enjoyed this video, you might also like to check out our Games Mag Flashback videos. 
In these videos we relive some gaming memories by taking a look through some old gaming video magazines. And as always to keep up to date of all our retro gaming videos don't forget to subscribe.